Welcome to our lecture on problem solving. I started with a quote from Albert Einstein because it shows the central importance of problem solving. We think of Albert Einstein as being an incredibly smart person, but he didn't see himself that way. You can see that in his quote. It's not that I'm so smart. It's just that I stay with problems longer. If I had 60 minutes to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes defining it and five minutes solving it. That's a really important insight into problem solving. That is the way a problem is represented or laid out in front of you plays a big role in whether we can solve the problem. Speaking of which, here's a problem I want you to roll around in the back of your head during this lecture. A man who lived in a small town married 20 different women. All of them are still living and he never divorced any of them. Yet he broke no laws. How could he do this? Think about that one. Okay, what is a problem? Well, a problem is when there's some obstacle between your current situation, where you are now, and your goal or what you want to have happen, right? If I'm driving down the I-5 and my car breaks down or I get a flat tire, I have a problem, right? I've got to fix that flat tire. Um, it's a problem because it's there's not an easy, immediate solution. So for example, we wouldn't call you know, typing a problem. It's not a problem that you need to reach out, you know, and, and hit the L button. It's, that's too simple. There has to be some sort of obstacle there in which it's not obvious, immediately obvious how to overcome the obstacle. As Einstein said, our chances of solving a problem depend a great deal on how that problem is presented to us. And if a problem is not presented in a clear and helpful way, then we need to do something called restructuring. We need to think about the problem and present it to ourselves in a new and different way, a way that does allow us to solve a problem. The speed limit sign is a perfect example. Um, speed limit signs don't look like this <laughs> because that, okay, I, the answer is in there, but it's dumb, right? It, the problem needs to be restructured. There are a lot of different types of problem solving, and just to give you a general feel for it, you can solve problems by trial and error, which is, you know, when you try to put together those IKEA bookshelves without looking at the directions, trial and error. Um, so you just try something, and if that fails, you try something else, and there's nothing particularly systematic about it, and it's easy to miss the, the solution. An algorithm is something that's very methodical, you um, do it. You perform a step-by-step -step strategy that takes you ever closer to the answer. Uh, if Spock were doing problem solving, he would probably use an algorithm. There is a uh, you could use a heuristic to solve a problem. And in the last week of our classes, we'll talk about heuristics in our judgment decision making lectures. But basically, heuristics are shortcuts to answering problems. It's when you rely on your gut instinct. Heuristics are very useful, but they can also lead to systematic errors. Insight refers to times when the answer to a problem just suddenly appears to you. For me, it always seems to be in the shower. I don't know what that's about, but it's so you've got some problem and you're noodling around with it in the back of your mind and you can't figure out how to solve it, can't figure out how to solve it. And then wham, Eureka, you think of it. That's insight. So to give you some more examples of how we use problem solving, let's say you go to a, a big grocery store like a Target and you want to find apple juice. If you just randomly walk up and down the aisles to find the apple juice, that would be trial and error. You're just wandering around trying stuff. An algorithmic approach to solving this problem would involve you, involve you very systematically um, thinking about the problem and laying out possible solutions. Maybe it's how you go up and down each aisle, not randomly, but one after the other without missing anything. That could be an algorithm. And a heuristic would be you walk into Target and think, hmm, I'm going to guess the apple juice is over there. And you go over there. Okay. There are two categories of problems, well-defined problems and ill-defined problems. Well-defined problems are problems that have a very clear starting place, they have a very clear goal, and they have a very clear set of rules that get you from where you are now to the goal. 
So um, board games and card games, anything where there's a, an agreed upon set of rules, um, an agreed upon starting place, it's agreed upon what the ending place looks like, that's a well-defined problem. Unfortunately, many of the problems that we deal with in life are not well-defined. They are, on the other hand, ill-defined. And an ill-defined problem is a problem that basically we can't agree on. So maybe uh, the problem you want to solve is how can we fix the American economy? Well, do we agree upon how well the American economy is doing right now? No. Can we agree on uh, what a really strong American economy would look like? Nope. Do we agree on the rules that politicians can use to get us moving in the direction of a better economy? Nope. So an ill-defined problem is a problem where the starting position, the goal state, and the rules are all kind of unclear, foggy. So I might ask you, um, okay, sit down and write a poem for me. Well, what constitutes a poem, right? How will you know when the poem's done? That's an example of an ill-defined problem. Uh, what defines a happy relationship? Different people will give you different answers. So that's an ill-defined problem too.